Now that you've been introduced to the theoretical justification behind why we balance chemical reactions, it's time to look at some strategies for how to balance the more difficult or just cumbersome chemical reactions to balance. So in the first two reactions, we can see that we have a bit of a problem in that they have a large number of individual atoms, and a lot of the time, the hardest thing to do is just to figure out where to start. Well, in this first example here, the synthesis of phosphoric acid, we use a strategy that we call the major hydroxide approach. And this is simply to start by balancing what we call the major atoms of a reaction first, which very simply are any atoms other than oxygen or hydrogen. Since we can see that we only have phosphorus as a non-oxygen, non-hydrogen element here, we can start here. For example, we see that this compound has four phosphorus atoms, so we can add a balancing coefficient of four to phosphoric acid in order to balance out phosphorus. Next, what we can do is we can take a look about whether to balance hydrogen or oxygen first and in this case i would personally recommend hydrogen because unlike oxygen which appears here in this compound in the reactants and in water in the reactants we can see that we only have one location where hydrogen can be so in this case we can start with hydrogen although this is not always the case it depends on whether hydrogen or oxygen can be found in a single compound or in multiple compounds so because hydrogen is visible here we can see that our products contain 12 hydrogen atoms meaning that if we want to balance out hydrogen using water we can add a balancing coefficient of six and that gives us 12 hydrogens in the reactants and if we do this we can see that something interesting happens because four times four implies that we have 16 oxygen in the products and if we look at the reactants we have 10 oxygen here and six oxygen here so balancing hydrogen first allowed oxygen to work itself out like this this is what we call the major oh approach in that we leave oxygen and hydrogen until everything else is balanced and usually by balancing one of the two elements the other element is balanced out naturally now the second equation that we see here is tricky because of the large number of polyatomic ions that we see and we can see as well because we're dealing with a neutralization reaction here we see our acid and here we see our base we can see that hydroxide does not appear in the products here because it has been neutralized by the hydrogen in the acid now whenever dealing with polyatomic ions the elements that occur within polyatomic ions are always easier to look at as a single unit rather than individually uh, so for example we would look at phosphorus and oxygen in phosphate together rather than individually because we see that the polyatomic ion is present in the reactants and again in the products now this is especially true in situations where we can have a large number of polyatomic ions which includes double replacement or displacement reactions or neutralization reactions like we see here so if we start let's use our major hydroxide strategy here and look at the elements and polyatomic ions that are not oxygen or hydrogen first for example we see three titanium metal ions here so we can balance them out with a coefficient of three in the reactants here likewise we see that there are four phosphate ions in this compound in the products and we can fix that by balancing out for phosphoric acid here in the reactants now when we're dealing with water the complicated thing about neutralization reactions is that hydrogen appears only in one compound in the products but in two compounds in the reactants so what i like to do is count the number of oxygens that are used to make water and things will normally work themselves out from there for example if we do three times four we see that titanium hydroxide here has 
12 oxygens, and because oxygen only appears in this one location in the products, if we add a coefficient of 12, now oxygen is balanced, and if we look at hydrogen, we see that we have 12 times 2 is 24 hydrogen. We can see that we have 4 times 3 is 12 hydrogen in the acid, and 4 times 3 is 12 hydrogen in the base, which works itself out to 24. So by combining, balancing the atoms in polyatomic ions together and our major hydroxide strategy, we can see that the reaction is actually not as difficult to balance as it may seem. Now, when it comes to combustion reactions, these are particularly messy, number one, because it involves oxygen and hydrogen once again, and number two, because the numbers of atoms are normally very, very large. Now, in order to make balancing combustion reactions easier, there is a strategy that we call the even an odd number strategy, and this involves determining whether each side in our chemical reaction has an even number of hydrogens and an even number of oxygens. So what exactly does this mean? Well, if we look at the reactant side, because oxygen only occurs within oxygen gas, because there is no oxygen in our organic compound, we can see that the oxygen here can only be an even number, because there is no whole number coefficient that we can multiply 2 by in order to get an odd number, but we can see here that because we have two oxygens in carbon dioxide and one oxygen in in water, we can see that this can be an odd number, which tells us that we most likely need an even balancing coefficient in front of water so that the number of oxygen in water is not an odd number. And here we see a problem. Because we have six hydrogen in the reactants, we would need a balancing coefficient of three here in order to get six but now we have an odd number of oxygen which won't be able to balance properly, so that three doesn't work. So what we can do, let's say instead of one of these organic compounds, we actually have two. Now the, we would balance hydrogen by doing two times six is 12, so if we put a balancing coefficient of six here, now both sides have 12 hydrogens. So, we've worked itself out nicely there, and balancing carbon is relatively straightforward because carbon only appears in one compound in the reactants. 2 times 6 means that we need a balancing coefficient of 12 here, and then all that we need to do is count oxygens. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 plus 6 is 30, and 30 divided by 2 means that we need a coefficient of 15 here to balance out the oxygens, and this is a demonstration of our even-odd strategy to make it easier to see whether we can have an even number of oxygens or an odd number of oxygens on either side. Now, if we take a look at a different situation here, we can see that the number of oxygens in our reactants here can now actually be an odd number because in addition to the oxygen from oxygen gas, our organic compound also has a single oxygen here, which means that both sides can now be odd numbers, and this actually makes it easier to balance. For example, if we balance hydrogen, we see 5 plus 1 is 6 hydrogen, so we can put a 3 right here. Now, because both sides can actually be odd numbers, we can see that this actually works out. So we have six carbons in our organic compound. So if we put a six here, six times two is 12 oxygens, plus three oxygens here is a total of 15. And that means that we would actually put a seven here because seven times two is 14, plus one oxygen here is 15. And now all three elements are balanced out. And it was easier to do because both sides can actually have an odd number of oxygens in this case. Now, the final type of reaction that many people struggle with are actually incomplete 
combustion reactions, but incomplete combustion reactions are actually easier than complete combustion reactions. So easy, in fact, that there is actually more than one way to balance an incomplete combustion reaction because we now have one, two, three different locations where carbon can be within our product molecules here. So, for example, if we want to start by balancing carbon, our only non-oxygen and hydrogen element, we can put a 6 in front of carbon dioxide here. And if we want to balance out hydrogen, we have 14 here, we can put a 7 here. Now, we can use our even odds strategy here in order to balance out oxygen. We can see that there's no oxygen in our uh organic molecule here so we can only have an even number of oxygens now for those of you that said that i made a mistake here because we have carbon monoxide an elemental carbon in incomplete combustion you're absolutely right uh, that was a trick on my part so let's decrease this number here and if we know that our incomplete combustion reaction can only have an even number of oxygens in the products that means we also need an even number of oxygen in the reactants but we have actually fixed that problem here for example if we put a four here uh, for our co2 we have four carbon here plus one is five plus one from elemental carbon here is a total of six so our carbon is balanced and if we count oxygen four times two is eight and then we have seven from water but we also have one from the carbon monoxide molecule here eight plus seven plus one is 16 which is an even number so we would balance oxygen by putting an eight like this now, if we want to find an alternate way of doing this, there are some uh, numbers that aren't going to change. For example, uh, the number of hydrogens doesn't change here. But let's say instead of putting a 4 on our carbon dioxide, let's put a 2 here. Uh, and if we put a 3 in front of our carbon monoxide, now we have... Uh, two carbons in CO2 plus three from carbon monoxide is five plus one from elemental carbon is six so our carbon is balanced seven times two is 14 so our hydrogen is balanced and now if we count oxygens two times two is four oxygen from CO2 plus seven from water plus three from carbon monoxide now we have seven plus three is ten plus four is fourteen oxygens instead of the sixteen from the previous equation and therefore we would put the balancing coefficient of seven here and this shows us that there are actually more than one way to balance an incomplete combustion reaction as long as you use the even odd strategy in order to find out whether each side requires an even number or an odd number of hydrogen and oxygens using each of the above strategies which we discussed you should now be able to tackle the practice problems below many of which are quite difficult because they contain uh, multiple polyatomic ions and especially reactions that involve combustion reactions or very large amount of atoms you should now be equipped in order to solve each of the balancing questions below